year is 1671. Takezo Kenzi, Japan's greatest samurai, has begun his search for the hidden forces of the warlord known as Whitebeard. Having defeated the 90 Ronin, he faced his next legendary trial. Takezo Kenzi, our hero, determined and undaunted, must find a piece of the missing map to locate the hidden fortress. And because Whitebeard is such a crafty one, it's guarded by the Black Bear of Sakashita. Depending on the source, the bear changes in description from 10 to 30 feet tall. In some versions, it breathes fire like a dragon. In others, the bear is a living shadow, incapable of being cut with a sword. But in every version, Kenzie emerges the victor, defeating the bear and taking from him the missing map. Having defeated the black bear, Kenzie finally had the location of Whitebeard's hidden fortress. But his road to it offered one last danger, Kenzie's most romantic trial, overcoming the snake women's charm. Probably the only kind thing that can be said about Whitebeard is that he was an equal opportunity warlord, happy to hire female assassins. Now, the snake women were twin sisters, said to be beautiful beyond measure, but they were also vicious and without conscience, known for killing their foes with serpent venom. So they became known as the snake women. Most versions of the trial describe them as half human, half snake, a product of a deviant tryst. They could change into giant serpents and make snakes do their evil bidding. Kenzie's blade might cut them, but every piece would turn into a snake that slithered away. In the end, they escaped Kenzie with their lives. Now, with the sweat of so many trials on his brow, Kenzie, exhausted, battered, finally reached his ultimate goal, the hidden fortress, where all of Whitebeard's forces had gathered. Whitebeard's army seemed uh, unstoppable. Their numbers are listed anywhere from 70,000 to 200,000. By any account, they were easily the largest army in Japan. The stakes were high. Whitebeard had already conquered half of Japan. Now he was poised to take over the rest. Kenzie knew that if he did not stop this unstoppable warlord, there would be no hope left. Japan would be lost. It was a battle unlike any other. A lone warrior against an army. But as we've seen, this was no ordinary warrior. This was Takezo Kenzie, the sword saint. Most versions of the tale describe a battle that lasted 11 days and nights. Kenzie was said to have killed every last warrior, leaving alive only those wise enough to lay down their arms before him. At the end of the 11 days, the only men left standing were Kenzie and Whitebeard himself. With scant records of the battle itself, we can only imagine the thunder in the clash of these two legendary swords. In the end, only Takezo Kenzie remained. By defeating Whitebeard, he had rescued an entire country from tyrannical rule. His place in both history and legend was secure. Facing the 90 Ronin, slaying the Black Bear, defeating Whitebeard's army. It seemed that legend made Kenzie a god among men. But even gods can be defeated and killed. Kenzie was not invincible, his heart being his great weakness. He would eventually meet his end as seen in his most famous tale, Kenzie and the Dragon.